Hi everybody, this is Craig Tanner for the Mindful Eye and the Photo of the Week on the Daily Critique. This week's Photo of the Week was created by Sam, who's an advanced photographer from Pennsylvania. Sam says he was attracted to reds and greens of some late summer flowers in his garden. I want to give you the rest of the backstory and metadata uh, towards the end of the video. Obviously, Sam has created an abstraction of the scene, and I want to talk about that after we talk about the design of the image and the things that I like. Um, Clearly, this is an image that's a lot about color. That's what drew Sam to the scene in the first place, and so this gives us a chance to talk about some things relative to color design that could be uh, powerful takeaways for you if you want to work with color um, in a way that has more impact. And one of the things that we can do to have more impact with color is to work with complementary color pairs. The complementary color pair from the painter's color wheel of red and green is what draws uh, Sam's eye into this scene. What's amazing is this shot is almost like a painter's color will color will because uh, we've got not only the complementary pair of red and green, we have the complementary color pair of blue and orange, and we have the complementary color pair of violet and yellow. And what's amazing about these colors is that they're all similar versions of these colors, very vibrant, saturated versions, almost pure versions of these colors from the painter's color wheel. Uh, and then you have uh, this tiny splashes here, a uh, very vibrant magenta. And so it's interesting, we get another complementary color pair, but this time from the printer's color wheel, and magenta comes back in uh, here in the image. So just wanted to mention this idea of complementary color and how powerful that can be. It can help to create a back and forth that feels balanced when we use these exact opposites on color wheels. It makes all the colors more vibrant in the pairs. That's the illusion of the opposite of the two colors. It creates more vibrancy, and this image is so much about vibrancy of color, so it's just fascinating to see that it's the pairs. It's the pairs of colors in large respect that's helping to create this feeling of color vibrancy. Another thing about this image uh, that's definitely worth mentioning, and I talk about this a pretty good bit, is how, yes, there's a lot of color here. There's a lot of saturated, vibrant color, but then you get to these places like this, and um, like this, and like this in the image where we get to color sea level. What do I mean by that? Pure white here, there's almost no color cast there. Some areas in there that are versions of sort of mid-gray that is almost pure. And some areas that are pretty close to pure blacks in this image without any color cast. That also really helps to separate the colors or give a sense of color being clean. And the other thing that's true um, about white and black is that red, particularly when it's this vibrant, is such a dominant color idea. And so a lot of times having a pure white and a pure black can be a way to help to balance the red. One of the reasons that I think that I look at this image and I don't get overwhelmed by the saturation of the color is because pure white and pure black are here helping uh, to pay those ideas off. Um, outside of the amazing color design of this image, uh, there are a couple of other things I really enjoy about it. One of the things I enjoy is that it is an abstraction, um, but we move in the image from top left to bottom right on sort of a continuum from almost the most abstract. It almost looks like a sideways pool of water with some petals of color floating on it to something that seems to be the most literal in the image, and I love that sort of gradient moving from abstract to more literal, and it happens the implication of that happens um, on one of the major diagonals, which can really help to unify the whole image. And then on the other feeling of diagonal, top right to bottom left, um, instead of the implication of energy, there are actual contouring lines here, actual lines in the image that over and over again sort of play across this feeling of movement in this direction. So you have some tension and back and forth, and also uh, the unity that can come with cross-hatching diagonals um, in the image. Another thing that I enjoy about this image is that, you know, to me this is uh, one of the visual anchors and, and sort of one of the real strong areas or centers of visual interest. And I love the way yellow has been played here. Yellow is, is a boundless color. It has so much power we have to be careful how we use it. It's really interesting here seeing the yellow contained by the red. Also fascinating seeing the pink come back in there, but I love the way yellow has uh, has been played um, in the image. And I like the way that the corners here are pretty dark. I also like the balance in the corners. Two dark corners here, 
moving to darker here, um, but there's a sense of balance in terms of the value and color that you see moving here and value and color that you see moving across on the other diagonal. Really beautiful image. A lot of things to enjoy about this image. Now let's talk about um, how Sam created the abstraction. He shot this with an Nikon D700, but he did two things that are pushing this away from literal. Um, one is he shot the image through a piece of textured glass, and the other is that he used an extraordinary lens. He used one of the lens babies, the lens baby composer. So Sam is combining the distortion that he's getting of light through this uh, textured piece of glass with the distortions that you get uh, on the front element of the lens baby, which is a lens that has a sweet spot of focus that's sharp in the middle of the field of view, and then a feeling of warped glass around that it creates these distortions that seem like they move towards the center of sharpness. All the lens babies give you the ability in one way or another to move that sweet spot of focus around by bending the lens, and it's pretty easy to imagine that Sam has bent the lens baby over to this as kind of the dominant subject idea. And on the opposite side of that bend, you'll get even more distortion uh, from the lens baby. So I wanted to mention uh, that at the end of the video, and then and also mention it as a possible takeaway from the video today. Um, you know, just moving away from the literal and towards the abstract a lot of times can be a way uh, to create more of an emotional impact uh, for the viewer. And the Lens Baby is a great tool for that and shooting through things. You know, one other thing that I'll mention here is you don't have to shoot through something that's solid. It doesn't have to cover the whole field of view. Um, you could use any kind of screen of information. You could shoot through some foliage uh, to partially abstract and also create another layer of information that's close and you could combine that sort of feeling of softness and abstraction with uh, openings through that to more of a literal scene and the idea of shooting through to create emotional depth and partial abstractions is a technique that you'll see done over and over and over again in cinema to create layers of information and also different feelings in the layers of information. Um, a really stunning abstract here from Sam that just is incredible in terms of a study of vibrant color and color pairs and also a really beautiful use of distorting light uh, to create uh, an abstraction and create a wonderful feeling for me in terms of looking at these flowers as the viewer. Say a big thank you to Sam for sharing this image with us. I want to say a big thank you to you for being here. hope you have a great weekend.